what I think I've been able to do is contribute to the careers of these actors that are seen as um, these very talented people that are um, perhaps not the most manageable of clients. David Unger is not your prototypical Hollywood agent. Sure, he's smart and savvy, but he's also honest. That honesty has allowed him to work with a group of clients some consider tough guys, like Val Kilmer, Mickey Rourke, former British soccer star Vinnie Jones, and Beowulf hero Ray Winstone. David Unger, welcome to Dog and Pony. Thank you, Tom. So the first part of our show is something we call Once Around the Track. Uh huh. I'll ask you a series of rapid fire questions which you cannot look at and you'll answer as quickly as you can. We'll do the whole thing in 30 seconds. Got it, go. Okay. Where were you born? London. What was your first job? An assistant at Propaganda Films. How long did that last? Five years. How many clients do you have? I can't really tell you without counting, but I'd say about 20. How many suits do you own? About 20. Oh, one, <laughs> one for each for, client. Exactly. Perfect. Who's your business hero? Steve Jobs, if I had to answer one. Okay. But I have many. Do you make the rules or break the rules? I'd like to think I'd make the rules. Are you obsessive or a procrastinator? I'm definitely obsessive. You've just been once around the track. So what does a talent agent do? A talent agent does a lot of things, but primarily we go and find work for our clients. And with so many clients, how do you, how do you juggle them all? I, I, I mean, don't they all want to be coddled and made happy at every moment? Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest challenge is you, you want them to feel like there isn't any other client in your life. Yeah. So why do your clients trust you so much? There are different kinds of agents. Yeah. The kind of agent that I'd like to think I am is a loyal, trustworthy, nurturing kind of agent. Uh -huh. And so it's funny you mentioned in the introduction that I have somehow cornered this market of bad boys. And that's not, it wasn't done by design. Yeah. But what it does do, what I think I've been able to do is contribute to the careers of these actors that are seen as um, these very talented people that are um, perhaps not the most manageable of clients um, by appealing to them from a very human, nurturing perspective. You want to know your products. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I hate to refer to clients as products, but I relate really well to these kinds of people. And what's interesting, though, is is you're not necessarily a dude's dude either. You know, you're not what out playing. What are you trying to say, Tom? I'm, I, 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 I'm saying you're very well dressed, David. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And uh, you're, not, you're not the guy who's out playing football and drinking beer every weekend, you know, but, but you have this relatedness to the ex-soccer thug, Vinnie Jones, you know? Vinnie's, you know, it's so funny because these actors... I mean, I've seen a picture of Vinnie Jones, and you've seen this picture too. I love that picture. Standing in front picture. of a, a, another player, yeah. reaching down and, and grabbing his private parts. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, is, this, is the, <laughs> this is your client. Uh, you, know, you know, it's so funny is that we, I, we were talking before this interview that I live vicariously through my clients. And maybe <laughs> it's because I want to be that guy, <laughs> that I represent guys like that. Yeah. Um, these guys are not who people imagine them to be. They're sensitive thoughtful, creative people. Yeah. And my job is to translate that to the community. I mean, I think it's about the work. Yeah. And I think when you realize that the choices that they've made in their careers puts them in a, in a league that's specific to, or maybe a league apart from others. I mean, my favorite actors yeah. are, you know, the guys like Sean Penn or Benicio Del Toro or Daniel Day-Lewis. or These are all wonderful actors mm -hmm. who are not really well understood by the community. Mm -hmm. There's, they're enigmas. Yeah. Daniel Day Lewis is an enigma. And who that's knows? part of their appeal too. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah. And so I think I'm attracted to personalities like that. What keeps you up at night? Fear. Yeah. This business is a business ruled by fear. Uh huh. You know, fear that another person is gonna gonna get a job that I'm pursuing for a client, fear that a deal is gonna go sideways, fear that uh, uh, I'm not going to get the client I'm pursuing. You know, it's it's really that. At one time, no one wanted to work with Mickey Rourke, and and he said that himself. I mean, it's no it's no secret. But you saw something in that relationship, and and you and Mickey met, and and you've had a you've had a pretty fruitful mm -hmm. relationship ever since. And what was that that you saw in him that? No one else did at that time. Because I thought he had the promise of being the next Brando. In fact, there were many articles written about him being the next Brando. And I, I met him at, I think, the lowest point of his career. And I remember reading all about Brando coming back and having Coppola uh, pick Brando up from obscurity. And nobody wanted to hire Brando in The Godfather, yeah. supposedly. And uh, it was about this young director, this maverick director, embracing Brando as this great actor who had been overlooked and bringing him back and reintroducing to him to a new generation of filmmakers mm -hmm. and reminding the public what a great actor he was. And so when I met Mickey, I, I sort of applied that theory to Mickey. 
And um, it proved to be true. I mean, what I realized is that the young directors that I was friendly with all idolized Mickey. Yeah. And all felt sort of a sadness that Mickey didn't realize his great potential. Mm -hmm. And so slowly but surely, Mickey uh, was introduced to this generation of young directors that he didn't know. And they all embraced him with open arms. And it was just wonderful to see that because it was about that connection. It was about being the the mediator, the, 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 the person that was able to introduce him to this whole new generation of, of, of directors that are absolutely desirous of putting him in that pedestal that, that I thought he deserved. So next is a segment we call None of Your Business. Uh -oh. I ask you a series of slightly impolite questions uh -huh. and you can either answer or tell me none of your business. Okay, can I ask you questions too? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Who's the biggest jerk in Hollywood? You stumped me. None of your business is the answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you could have called that one. Have you ever poached a client? Yes, and often. Wow. All right. Yeah. That's that honesty. Yeah. That I mean, that's how we so build our about. businesses. Okay. You know, and, and by the way, in, in any other business, uh -huh. how do you get the customer to go from Walmart to Kmart or from Walmart to Costco? You court them, you right? You court them. You have to advertise. You have to go and and source new business. Yeah. That's what we do as agents. David Unger, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Tom. As always, feel free to post comments or if you'd like to email and suggest guests, you can get me, Tom Tapp, at tom at dogandpony.com. Bye-bye. Dog and pony, dog and pony.